Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my channel. So today we are going to talk about stress, strain, and deflection. So first of all, for stress, so I believe most of you have taken statics from your previous uh, class. So in statics, whenever we do a free body diagram, we always assume a center of mass. So we assume all the forces are going to act on the center of the mass. So technically, let's think about it. So intuitively, if we have the part, if we have a force that is acting on the part, so most likely they are probably not going to be exactly on the center of mass. So instead of assume all the forces are going to be on the center of the mass, so we probably need to reconsider it. So intuitively, all the forces, they are going to be equally distributed on the part. So instead of talking about the force itself, so we are probably interested in how the forces they are equally or evenly distributed on an area. So think about it. Let's see if we have a 10 Newton of a force that is applying on this area. So let's see if the area is one meter square or if the area is a 10 meter square. So apparently that a 10 Newton force is going to be more heavily on the one meter square area instead of that bigger 10 meter square area. So instead of talking about the force itself, we will be interested in how the forces are equally distributed on the area. So instead of talking about the force itself, we are going to focus on force divided by area and we define this term as stress. And in mechanics, we use sigma to represent stress. So this is a similar with pressure, which is force divided by area. And if you are talking about fluids, then we call it as pressure. And most likely, if you are talking about solid mechanics, and we call it as stress. So the units of stress is going to be the same as a pressure. So in international units, we use Pascal, where sometimes if the units, they are big, then we use uh, GPA, which is gigapascal. So one gigapascal is 10 to nine Pascal. Or in English units, we use PSI which is pound per square inch. Or sometimes if the numbers are too big, we probably use KSI. Okay, so this is a stress. Now let's think about strain. So imagine we still have the object and if we apply tensile forces in both direction. So intuitively, the part will have a deflection. So let's think about the deflection. Let's assume we have two parts. The first part is pretty short. Let's assume it's just one inch. And the other part, let's assume it's pretty long. Let's assume that's a 10 inch. And for the deflection, so for the one inch one, let's assume the deflection is 0.1 inch. And the second one, the longer one, let's assume the deflection is one inch. So one inch original length, the deflection is 0.1 inch. And the original length with 10 inch, the deflection is one inch. So both of the deflection rate is 10%. Okay, since the original length is different, which is one inch and a 10 inch, so it probably won't make sense to compare the deflection, which the first one is 0.1 inch and the second one is one inch. So we probably need to think about more reasonable way to compare 
the deflection regardless of the original length. So instead of talking about the deflection, which you can also call elongation in this case, we could define the elongation percentage, which you use the deflection divided by the original length, or you can call it as the final length, subtract the initial length and divided by the initial length. And we define this term as Zhuwen. And as you can imagine the units, so the top one is a length unit, like inch, and the bottom one is still a length unit, which is inch as well. So Zhuwen is actually just a percentage, which means no units for Zhuwen. Okay, so this is a stress and the Zhuwen. Now, Let's think about stress and the strain are being applied in engineering materials. So for engineering materials, so most likely we want the specific material that can withstand the most of the stress, but has the least strain. So it's probably reasonable to calculate the ratio, which is stress, over strain. And in engineering material, we define the ratio stress over strain as Young's modulus or called modulus of elasticity. So we are going to discuss Young's modulus next time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.